Welcome to the next session of diversity and inclusion training here for Associated Food Stores. Today we've got a very special guest. Adrian Andrews is the Assistant Vice President for Diversity and the Chief Diversity Officer here at Weber State University in Ogden, Utah. Adrian, welcome. Oh, it's so wonderful to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We're so glad that you're here. Adrian, let's just begin by asking, what is diversity? Well, diversity is the myriad of things that make an individual up. So, for example, you could look at my gender, my ethnic background, my religious beliefs, or maybe I don't even have religious beliefs, but all of those different aspects of my identity that make me me or that make you you. So along with that, why is it so important to businesses to understand diversity? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question because people sort of feel like, doesn't everybody want the same thing? And sometimes we do, but lots of times we want the same thing in a different way. So when we understand diversity, we recognize the unique needs that an individual or group of individuals might have. So you've explained to us what diversity is. Explain to us what bias is. Well, bias is tricky. Bias is a way that we sometimes go into a situation either for or against something. We might have ideas or beliefs that a certain type of person is a particular way, and we would use a broad brush stroke and make that the way that all people who we might identify like them to behave that way. Usually when we talk about bias, it's a negative. Occasionally, we are biased in favor of something, but that also has negative outcomes because sometimes we fail to see the problems because we already have a preference or bias in relation to something. So biases, while they can be good or bad, typically are bad and actually hurt us all. And in the case of a business, when we have bias, we fail to serve the clients that we seek to serve. Hmm. So are there different types of bias? There are many types of bias. One of the easiest ones to come up would be gender bias. We have a bias either for or against men or women or beliefs and attitudes about how they ought to act, right? Well, let's say you are hiring somebody and they arrive and they are dressed in a way that you think or feel is inappropriate for a man or woman to present dressed that way. You might not be able to hear any of the things that they bring to the table, including that they might be the best fit for the position you have to offer because you have a bias about that gender or the way they're presenting that gender to you. If we talk about other types of bias, you're going to see things like confirmation bias or selection bias. With a confirmation bias, what we're talking about is when we already have an idea about an individual or population, and we see something happen, and then we say, see, I was right. That's how they are. That's what they do. And that's a confirmation bias. With a selection bias, again, that can go both ways. We might select somebody who looks like us or has a similar value or hobby, somebody we can identify with in a meaningful way to us, but that may obscure our ability to see all of the other pieces at play. Mm -hmm. So anytime we're hiring or serving a customer, we're going to find ways that we differ from each other. But we also have one fundamental way that we connect, which is we share a common humanity. So the first thing that we need to do is approach each other as people. So as I look at the two of you, I want to get to know you. I might recognize that there are differences between us, but those are opportunities for learning and growth for all of us. We get to learn with and from each other. So one of the best things we can do is recognize we're not all going to see things the same way, but figure out how do we start from the place that we have in common and go from there. So it seems that a personal awareness of your biases would be important and that also that could affect the way that you make decisions or take actions or even make people feel. It's absolutely true. So even though I'm a diversity expert, I still have to do some self-evaluation myself and ask myself, wait a minute, is that my own bias coming out? And if so, what can I do about it? One of the first things I try to do is step back from the situation and say, am I being unfair? Am I creating an environment that's unwelcoming or could be perceived as hostile? And is that my intent? And if it is, why? Where does that come from? It's doing some self-work, which we often don't want to do because it's labor intensive. And we sort of feel like we're good people and we do good things. If you were a manager in one of our organizations, either the warehouse or out at retail or even at corporate, 
would you encourage there to be some diversity in some of those groups or would you just allow those tribes to build naturally? I would encourage, and let me tell you why. It's really the business case for diversity. When everybody looks the same and thinks the same and has the same experiences, we fail to come up with new solutions. We can only see things from one frame of reference, but when we increase the diversity in the room, no matter what room it is, suddenly we have different perspectives. We have new ideas. There's a greater opportunity for creativity and problem solving is transformed because we also begin to see things the way our consumers or our guests might see things in ways that we don't because we have different identities. But if we're working together, we're going to be able to come up with ideas and resources and opportunities that we otherwise would miss. Mm -hmm. And additionally, it's just better for the bottom line. When we have diversity in our teams, we not only retain people longer, but we're able to meet a bigger audience and respond to their needs. Mm -hmm. Well, Adrian, we appreciate your time. And as we think about final thoughts, maybe just shed your insight as where do we go from here? Well. I'm so thrilled you asked that, and let me tell you why. One, I keep going back to your compass because I really love it. I just think it's such a cool tool, and I, I wish more folks had access to something like it in their own organizations. I would say keep working your compass and holding yourselves accountable to the compass. And that means recognizing that it's not a one and done thing to do a diversity video or workshop. These are ongoing conversations, and while they might be a little bit uncomfortable, We've all got to get better about being uncomfortable and being okay with that. And the reason is because if we're willing to recognize our own discomfort, perhaps we're better able to see the discomfort of others, whether that's through our intent or our impact or something else altogether. And it's one of the reasons that I'm really impressed with this organization and the work you do, because you're concerned at all levels. And as long as you continue on this trajectory, I can't see anything but success.